One of the most anticipated races we've seen in recent times, Breeders' Cup or otherwise. Race 11 of 12 on Championship Day at Keeneland. The Breeders' Cup Classic, $6 million in purse money, worth a lot more to the individual connections. At a mile and a quarter, Joe Christofek, Scott Shapiro, and Scott Flightline. You know, since the moment uh, he debuted and the spacing between the races and the performances he has put forth, everyone's been more than overly intrigued by this animal, not only, you know, generationally, not only with what he's been able to do against the competition this year, but where he stands potentially amongst the greats. If he's going to elevate himself to that level on Saturday at Keeneland, he's going to have to earn it. This is a good field. It is a very good field, Joe. Three to five on the morning line, but that really is not about the competition. That's about how dominant Flightline has been throughout his five race career thus far. Of course, a perfect five for five. Appears to be training lights out, according to all reports, uh, leading up to the biggest race of his career. But you said it. I mean, this is easily, by far, the toughest field he'll ever face. Will it matter? I don't know. I mean, he works out his own trip, and he runs some of the fastest races I've ever seen. In terms of greatness, We'll have to see how long he does it for, for me to compare him to the likes of the best of the best. But on numbers, he's been absolutely brilliant. I mean, the question was two turns. A bigger question was a mile and a quarter. And he <laughs> answered those questions about as resoundingly in a positive way as any horse possibly could in his last race. Now he's got to go a mile and a quarter against tougher competition. How do you see this playing out tactically? You know, Scott, everybody knows Flightline's got a target on his back. They all know that they have to prove they're good enough to beat him. But if you're riding one of these horses, how do you go about that? How do you attack? Well, I think I ride Ortiz Jr. on Life is Good has to be all out to get the lead, like he always is. And I know a lot of people are down on this horse after his effort in the grade one Woodward when he was Odds on to say the least, one to 20, right? And a very workmanlike win over the slot. But trainer Todd Pletcher has been here before. There's no reason to think that life is good, would have been anywhere near crank for that race, knowing the ultimate goal is to beat Flightline and win the Breeders' Cup Classic. So he's going to take some catching. I think Flightline has it in him to just relax, just off. If you look at some pace projectors, you would believe that those two really have a chance to go at it. Maybe that'll be the case. Maybe flight line will be too geared up and they'll go at it. But I think they line up 2-4, life is good, flight line, and everybody behind them with Hot Rod Charlie probably next in line. I mentioned lots more on the line besides just the purse money. Obviously, prestige is part of it. Heading to the breeding shed is part of it. But the championships on the line as well, particularly three-year-old uh, championship with uh, the Kentucky Derby winner, Rich Strike, where he to pull off a massive upset. He could get voted in. The leader in the clubhouse right now is Epicenter, but it's not a big lead over a horse like Taba, who also is in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Of those three, Scott, uh, how do you rank them? Well, I like Taiba the most. I still think they're getting to the bottom of this three-year-old son of Gunrunner that got a much later start to his career than Epicenter and more and earlier than Rich Strike as well. And you know as well as I do that I've been a fan of Epicenter, much like you, throughout his career. He's been good to us at the windows. It's been fun to follow his, him along. But how much more development does he have in him? Sure, we've seen horses like Gunrunner for Steve continue to get better. But I think Epicenter was better as a three-year-old than Gunrunner. Gunrunner got good, really good good towards the tail end he's going to need another move forward Taiba I think he is the a horse that has that move forward in here and if anybody's going to spring the upset I think it's either going to be Taiba or life is good that being said I think Epicenter has got a, probably a better chance to run his race than either of those two horses I just love the way Epicenter's developed early in his career you know he had to be on the lead or he had to be forward then he started developing a little bit more of an off the pace style sitting in the pocket and winning obviously the travers he came from even further back in the preakness he lost but he had to overcome quite a bit of adversity just to get second i don't think we've seen the best of this horse yet so i'm going to still believe that he has some upside and the way this race is going to play out there is going to be a fast pace up front i'm expecting epicenter honestly he's got the sit probably eight or 10 lengths off of it and just try to make that one huge run in the stretch where does that put him could put him five lengths behind flight line as he crosses the wire and epicenter rolls up for second but 
I just see a scenario where he's going to make his run in the stretch. Uh, like Steve Asmussen said in a lot of interviews, I don't know where it puts him. I know our horse is doing great. I know we've got to try to slay the dragon here in flight line, but I expect Epicenter to run the best race of his career, and I'm going to put him on top only because I know the flight line's price is going to be completely deflated. Yeah, and I mean, I think coming across as picking the horse is fourth is a knock, but it's not really. I mean, I struggled to decide who I would pick for third between Life is Good and Epicenter. I do think Life is Good is going to bounce back and be on the front end and give him some sort of advantage. Epicenter, super cool horse, would not be upset at all if he runs me down in the lane and runs down flight line to spring the upset. But it's Taba that I'm most interested in this spot in terms of wagering. I just think he's sitting on a massive effort. Bob Baffert has always been extremely high on this horse. Obviously, a $1.7 million purchase. Kind of struggled in the mornings. has been more workmanlike. I really think he's coming into his own. His last effort in the Pennsylvania Derby was a monster. I'm going to play a cold exact uh, flight line, Taba, in this one. But really just looking forward, Joe, to this race from an entertainment perspective as much as a wagering perspective. Of course, though, I'll be dialing into that Twin Spires app. I'll open and close with this is a highly anticipated race and we haven't even mentioned olympiad who's six for seven this year has only stubbed his hoof on one occasion uh, he's a very legitimate horse as well for scott shapiro i'm joe christofek don't forget about that money back offer at twin spires opt in if you bet a horse to win the entire breeders cup weekend and they run second or third you'll get up to ten dollars back enjoy the breeders cup classic